It was mentioned in the table for R squared that R squared shines in showing which explanatory variable has the most effect on the response variable. Let's see that it put into action, shall we? So we have a part of a larger study by um, Speed and Gangestad, which is from 1997. It collected ratings and nominations on a number of characteristics for 66 fraternity men and from their fellow fraternity members. The following paragraph is taken from the results section. So men's romantic popularity is correlated with several characteristics, most outgoing, R squared equals 0.47, best dressed, R squared equals 0.48, most physically attractive, R squared equals 0.43, most self-confident, R squared equals 0.44, and funniest, R squared equals 0.37. Unexpectedly, however, men's potential for financial success did not significantly correlate with romantic popularity. R squared is equal to 0.1. Now, you won't see it always in a paragraph like this. This was actually written in a paragraph, which you'll sometimes see in studies, and you'll also sometimes see them in a table listed out. And they'll have all these different R squared values. And so what you want to do is figure out which one appears to show the strongest relationship with the response variable. And you'll notice, by the way, that these are moderate, 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 right? They're all moderate relationships, except for this one, which is weak. So which one had the strongest one? Well, the strongest one would be most outgoing. Oh, no, it would be best dressed. Look, I looked, I looked the wrong way. Best dressed right there. Why? Why is that better than most outgoing? Well, because 48 is higher than 47. So best dressed whatever that means. I'm going to put it in quotes. It was 1997. Who knows what they were dressing like. All right, so best dressed because, now how do you know? Because the R squared, which was 0.48, was the highest R squared value. That's where it's really great. Right? It allows us to directly compare because we don't know if any of these were positive or negative. We don't know anything. All we know is that that one was the strongest relationship because R squared was 0.48. Now, if you're thinking, it sounds like we're going to have to be able to find R squared ourselves. Sure, of course, right? You've actually already done it. You might not have realized it. When you did linear regression, which let me show you on the calculator stat, calculate, number four, so you can just hit number four. L1 and L2, all that good stuff. Same thing you do to get the linear regression line as well as the correlation coefficient. R squared is right there, 0.473, right there. So 0 0.473, we often write it as a percentage. So you can write 47.3, but then you have to put a percent sign next to it. So either one, either one of those is fine. Now in StatCrunch, you found it as well, but of course StatCrunch has a huge output. So you'll have to know where to look. So we go to Stat down to regression, click on simple linear. Then choose your x and your y variable. And again, ignore all this other stuff. Just ignore it. We're not using it, so don't worry about it. And you can see r squared is right here. R S Q stands for squared. So that's your r squared value. And again, um, don't worry about most of the rest of the stuff. So your regression line's right here. Your sample size, which is good to know, is right there. Your correlation coefficient is right there, and your coefficient of determination is right below it. And don't forget the intercept and the slope can actually also be found here if you don't like them writing it out up here the way that they're doing. And they're also telling you, by the way, what y and x are in that output. So y is math passing the math test, x is the free reduced lunch. This is the same example we've seen several times. All right, so find it with either um, stack crunch. or the TI-84, which I'm going to make disappear in a second. There it is. <laughs> now, I didn't put it in there, but I'm going to. So um, I'm going to add this in for next semester. So if you're watching this in fall of 2020, um, just write it down. But for later semesters, it'll be in there. Let's interpret the R squared value. Oh, and you'll notice that they're having us, um, sometimes they write capital R, sometimes they write lowercase r. Computers tend to write capital R, so um, either one, it, it makes no difference right, for our purposes. So you can use lowercase or capital. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll change them both to lowercase for future. Okay, so interpretation. Let's grab that script. So I wanted us to practice with this. It says, 
r squared percent of the total variation in y, that's the dependent uh, response variable, is explained by the least squares regression line. Matter of fact, I'll even add that response variable. Okay, so let's see here. So 47.3% of the total variation in y. Now here's where you have to put in what the response variable is. So our response variable was the percent of students passing the state math exam. So write that in the, and you can usually see it <laughs> written out somewhere. So in the percent of students passing the state math exam or state math test is explained by the least squares regression line. You just write out that script. What's it talking about? Well, okay. So some dots are higher in Y value and some dots are lower. And why is that happening? Well, this line can accommodate for 47.3% of why these points are the way they are. But that means that 52.7% of it, we're not sure why it's happening. It's happening for a reason other than this line, other than the free reduced lunch. There are other factors going into whether students can pass the state math exam. So you build a line from the X and Y relationship that you see and the R squared value from that line tells you that the line is accommodating for 47.3% of the variation you're seeing and why some of these points are higher than others. Why do some schools have higher massing, math passing rates than low, these other schools? And the answer is we don't know but we know that this line accommodates for 47.3% of the variation we're seeing. And that's what you write for your interpretation. Notice this piece in there. That's where all the work is. You'd have to write out what Y was in your context. All right, so let's do it again, but for the other problem that we saw in section 4.1. So we've seen the free reduced lunch one before, but we've also seen this one with the fertility rate and life expectancies from 1962. So we have our fertility rate here, which is births per woman and our life expectancy here, right? And you'll notice that they gave us R squared right there. R squared is 0.5189. Isn't that nice? So that's the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination is 0.5189. And again, you don't have to write it as a percent. You can write it completely as a, a decimal. That's totally fine. Now we want to compute the correlation coefficient from the given information. OK, so correlation coefficient is r, not r squared. So we're looking for r. And again, they use capitals for Excel. Don't worry about it, right? Capital letter, lowercase letter, tomato, tomato. It's fine. Remember that R is plus or minus the square root of R squared, and you have to choose the correct one. Okay. So that's just to remember or recall. Okay. So what does that mean for us? Well, I need to find r, so I need to take the square root of 0.5189. Now, am I going to choose positive or am I going to choose negative? When I look at the graph, I can see that it has a negative slope. Also, when I look at the equation of the line, if they didn't give me the graph, I can see it has a negative slope. So that means that I'm going to choose the negative one. And I'll make a little note. And there we have it. So now I want to grab a calculator. 
in order to be able to find this. All right? So I want the negative square root, and honestly, I don't need to do the negative part. I just need the square root part. So on a TID4, you hit second, and then you hit the x squared button because that's the square root. It's above the x squared button. And 0 0.5189, enter. And you get 0 0.7203, right? So R is 0 0.720. Now, on Desmos, if you don't have a calculator, if you have Desmos instead, I can show that to you. So you can go to the palette down here and search around for square root. It's right there. It looks like a check mark. And say square root 0.5189. And there you have it. And then you can hide the, the palette away. And there you have it, 0 0.7203. Okay. So that's how to find r from r squared doesn't happen very often, but we want to know how to be able to do it. And I forgot to write the negative. Look at that. I wrote a negative in front, and then I forgot to write it right there. i got to put that negative in there, otherwise I would be wrong. It needs to have a negative, because that definitely has a negative slope. All right. Now, interpreting the R squared, that's that script that we follow. So we would say 51.89% of the total variation in y, and y is the response variable, so it's life expectancy. In life expectancy, is explained by the least squares regression line. I guess the only variation you can have on that script is uh, playing around a little bit with what you write there. So you write like the linear regression line or the least squares regression line, something like that. We all know what you mean. Or the linear regression model, I should say. All right. Now, a politician from another country sees our data and results for life expectancy and fertility rates. So she determines that to get a longer life expectancy in her country, she should just restrict the number of children to one per woman because that's never happened before. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. Um, that has happened before. Um, I'll let you research that. So if you want to move yourself from being a country over here, you hear what's happening, to over here. So she just decides, OK, that's it. I'm going to make a law that every woman can only have one child. And that'll automatically mean that we go over here, right? Wrong, right? So correlation is not causation. It bears repeating because it's such an important idea. In an observational study, which this is, right? We're just observing what these countries are, are doing. We're not affecting anything. In an observational study, due to lurking variables such as, right? And that's another script that we have to follow um, from section 4.1. So we learned a little script and we follow it. Right? It's in a box at the end of 4.1. All right, so in this particular um, script, we will have to put in what the lurking variables are. But this little script, you must follow. Right? Correlation is not causation, right, in observational studies, because there is a lurking variable. And then you have to think of what the lurking variable is. So maybe there should be a blank there, right, because you should fill out at least one lurking variable that affects both the um, explanatory variable and the response variable, right, like these pictures down here that we saw in 4.1. So we need to think of a variable that would affect fertility rate and life expectancy. Hmm. All right, so why are com some countries in 1962 over here in the top left corner and some countries over here? What's, what's a variable that's affecting both the fertility rate and the life expectancy? Well, to be honest with you, lots of things, <laughs> right? There's a million things we could think of. Um, one of the big ones I would think of is infrastructure. Right? Infrastructure is a catch-all term for all the things that go into making um, 
a modern country modern. So electricity, um, housing, roads, um, working sewer systems, um, all of those things. And that would affect your fertility rate and your life expectancy. Right? Um, what's your housing levels at? Things like that. Right? Running water. You know, important things like that. So that would be an, a, a, po a potential one, excuse me, a possible one. Um, another thing we could put in is uh, just think um, poverty or income level. GDP right, how much money your country, how much wealth, both of these are measures of the wealth of your country, um, the poverty rates in your country, etc. right, you can imagine there's just tons and tons and tons of things that would affect both the fertility rate and life expectancy in a country.